Good afternoon on this Saturday, October 20th. We do have some action to talk about in the tropics. First off, we have an area of low pressure associated with the tropical wave in the central Atlantic, but this one isn't so much of a concern because it's going to remain out at sea. But more importantly, we've got a tropical wave situated to the south of Hispaniola in the central Caribbean, and it is showing some signs of organization. The latest tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center is giving the Central Atlantic Wave a 20% chance of development, but as we look deeper into the Caribbean, that is where we have a 60% chance of tropical cyclone formation within the next 48 hours, and a Hurricane Hunter reconnaissance plane is scheduled to investigate this low tomorrow afternoon. A brief overview of the tropical model members show that there is a lot of divergence with tracks ranging as far west as Honduras and Nicaragua, but overall the main consensus is for a gradual turn back toward the greater Antilles, and we're going to take a closer look at the more reliable dynamical models in just a couple of moments. Today's regional satellite view shows that the northern Gulf of Mexico is very stable as we had a cold front recently sweep through much of that area, and there isn't a cloud in the sky across the central Gulf Coast. But down toward the south in the deep tropics across the central Caribbean, extending westward into the eastern Pacific, we still have a very active monsoon trough, and we see that the monsoon trough is interacting with this tropical wave to the south of the Dominican Republic and Haiti, and this is going to be the main area that we're going to be watching over the next several days for any signs of development. As we switch over to the enhanced infrared, we can see that convection is not very well organized just yet, but we do have convection spreading as far north as Hispaniola, and heavy rainfall is going to be a growing concern over the next week as it looks like this area of low pressure is not going to be in a hurry, at least in the short term. And as we take a look at the water vapor, conditions are at least marginally favorable. There's some hints of upper level ridging, which is what you need in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere to prevent the system from being sheared apart. Now, if the low were to be any more toward the north right now, it would be encountering quite a lot of southwest vertical wind shear, as we do have a lot of troughing out across the northern gulf along with dry air. Upon closer inspection, it's really no wonder that the Hurricane Center decided to quickly upgrade the chances of development because there are already signs of a developing low-level surface circulation, and all we need are a few more flare-ups of convection directly over that surface center for the pressure to continue to drop, and over time those winds should begin to increase as that surface low strengthens. As we observe some of the latest wind shear analysis, we can see the presence of that upper-level ridge that we just talked about on the water vapor imagery, and as long as that upper-level ridge is located over the low, conditions should be favorable for at least slow intensification, and as we turn on the color representation, you can see this small pocket of favorable upper-level winds in the central and southwest Caribbean. And this is a favorable setup because we don't think that the low is going to gain much in the way of latitude over the next 48 to 72 hours. So the low definitely has at least a short-term window for some development before beginning to move more toward the north. The latest low-level vorticity chart shows that we do have some spin in the low levels to the south of Hispaniola, which really comes as no surprise given that we have a favorable looking signature already developing on the visible satellite imagery. And this is going to be one of the tools that we will be using to evaluate the strength of this disturbance until the hurricane hunters arrive sometime tomorrow. In addition to the short term favorable conditions in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere, combined with strengthening low level vorticity, we also still have very warm water temperatures across the central and western Caribbean. In fact, this area is home to the highest oceanic key content levels in the basin so this is going to be another favorable parameter that should allow us to see the next tropical storm of the season develop within the next few days. The following is the latest 12Z model run from the Global Forecast System, which is a model run by NOAA. And as we see over the next 48 to 72 hours, there isn't much development, but certainly by day three, we have an area of developing low pressure to the southwest of Jamaica. And I want to also focus on the area of high pressure situated over the U.S. East Coast. This is a favorable setup for tropical development in the Western Caribbean as the high pressure to the north is going to support the idea of more convergence in the Central and Western Caribbean and that is exactly what we are seeing. And as we continue to advance the forecast, as we go into day five and day six, we have an area of low pressure developing into at least a tropical or subtropical storm crossing over much of Jamaica, Eastern Cuba, Western Hispaniola, and finally off into the Southeast Bahamas and as we take a closer look at the low-level vorticity forecast, you can see that the disturbance is going to meander around the southwest Caribbean to the south of Jamaica for the next few days as the steering currents remain generally weak. But as we go into days four through six, you can get the idea that the area of low pressure is going to strengthen, but also become somewhat elongated from southwest to northeast. And this is a sign that the system would not be very well organized despite strengthening into at least a subtropical or tropical storm. 
and this could be the result of increasing southwest vertical wind shear. So as we switch over to the 300 millibar level, which is much closer to the jet stream, we can see that an area of troughing is going to develop because we have a lot of upper level ridging situated over Mexico. This is going to fuel some troughing out across the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And as we work our way into day seven, we've got an upper level low or an upper level area of low heights to the south of the Florida Keys near western Cuba. And although this would enhance ridging out across the central and eastern Caribbean, this could be a little too close to our developing disturbance and we could see increasing southwest flow aloft and more in the way of vertical wind shear. And hopefully this does happen because the central and western Caribbean are notorious for developing major hurricanes in mid to late October and you really can't provide any suspect area of low pressure with a much larger window than this. And we're still going to have to watch this area very closely, but as of right now, I would still place the odds of hurricane development at no higher than 15 or 20 percent. Another positive sign is that we have fairly good agreement between the GFS and ECMWF, and we are now looking at the latest 12Z run of the European model. And as we go into day two and day three, we do see steady development. And by 72 hours, this is more than likely at least a tropical depression situated to the south southwest of Kingston, Jamaica. By day four and day five, we see that the area of low pressure is continuing to strengthen, but the isobars are not very compacted. This is still a pretty drawn out area of low pressure, and that's similar to what we were just seeing with the GFS run. And as we advance into day six, the storm is still moving toward the northeast. And although we have moderate ridging out across the east coast, it's not very well established, and we still have powerful troughing out across the central Atlantic. So the models are still keying in on this trough being just strong enough to lure our developing tropical storm to the northeast and away from Florida. However, I should also point out that even if the storm does take this track, we do have a fairly decent pressure gradient between the surface low and surface high pressure centered over the Carolinas. So we should have a very strong fetch of easterly flow across southeast Florida. And this could result in some fairly strong gale force winds along with a lot of beach erosion along with the risk of strong and dangerous riptides. So even if the storm does not pass directly over southern Florida, you could still feel the effects of this system. So keep it tuned to 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app. We're going to keep a very close watch on this low in the event that it starts to organize more than expected or if that track starts to change. So we're going to have more daily updates and potentially even more frequent updates if things become a little bit more concerning. But as of right now, we're looking at a tropical storm heading toward the Greater Antilles, and this is going to be the main focus in the tropics over the next week.